Thanks for checking out the show review video. We're going to be talking about Critters, A New Binge, which is the new show that was put onto the Shudder service. Yes, I love Shudder. I will be putting plenty of videos up about movies on Shudder and shows on Shudder, uh, Shudder exclusives. And in this case, the Critter series was a Shudder exclusive. So uh, this is a good follow-up, actually, I believe, to the um, Puppet Master Littlest Reich that I did, which was an exclusive for Shudder, I do believe. And, uh, yeah, they, they go hand-in-hand in, hand in a few ways, actually. Uh, not just because of their kind of relative time period, but also there's an actor in common and how, how it's done, all that type of stuff. So, for, first off, let's talk about this real quick. Subscribe. Please hit that subscribe. If you like these videos, if you watch one of my videos and you have a decent time at the least... Please just hit that subscribe. It takes you like one second, and it can mean a lot for my channel and my channel growth. And then that will encourage me to do more videos, which you guys would benefit from. So, And I'm always up for suggestions on shows, on movies, stuff like that. I do have a movie review that I will be doing in the very near future. I'm going to be doing The People Under the Stairs for one of the subscribers. Uh, that is going to be coming up hopefully in the next few days. Fingers crossed. Sorry, I've just been kind of busy. So typically you'll see my posts going up or my videos going up on weekends because that's when I have time. But here and there I'll scatter it throughout the week. But all right, so Critters New Bench. This just showed up. I'm posting this on Sunday. It just came out on back on Thursday, the 21st of March. And they kind of hyped it, you know, Shutter hyped it a decent amount, which, you know, any service is going to hype what they're about to be putting out. Makes sense. And I think it's been kind of mixed reviews. I know there have been a bunch of people who have been kind of saying, oh, they're kind of let down by it. And then other people were like, I love it. I think it's amazing. So I start when I started watching it, oh, by the way, no spoilers in this. When I started watching it, I was kind of like eh, it's not what I was expecting not necessarily what I was wanting and then once I got mm, maybe three or four episodes into it because it's 10 no eight episodes total um, once I got two or three episodes into it I was like actually I think like three I was like okay you know I'm actually enjoying this right now and then by the end I was just like Yep, I dig it. I dig it. And I would take a season two, by the way. So one of the things that threw me off initially, and this isn't really a spoiler, uh, is that their their episodes are super short. And I didn't anticipate that. I was thinking, oh, the episodes will be between 30 minutes and 60 minutes. And, and I watched. I didn't look at how long they were. I just put on the first episode and I started watching. And then I was just like, what? Is, is that episode over? Are you serious? Because it was like 10 minutes. And I was just like, this has to be some sort of like joke that they're ending it right here and then they're going to keep it going. No, like lit literally the episodes were like between eight, this is like between like eight and ten minutes each. So really it's it's like a feature film. It's basically like an hour and a half film, hour and 20 minute, hour and a half film. But it's broken up into episodes and say it's a show. So I kind of took it because of how self-aware the whole series is. I took it as this is kind of a joke about streaming services having like certain length episodes of shows and certain numbers, which is something I've kind of gone off about here and there on some of these videos. Uh, I think the Umbrella Academy review that I did was one of the th ones I talked about that type of stuff. And um, yeah, so I think they were kind of like taking a shot at people who do that kind of stuff and be like, oh, well, it has to be a certain amount of episodes. And we try and make it around the same length when really you should just kind of do whatever length makes sense for the story and do however many episodes make sense for the story. And they could have just done Critters as one movie and it plays like a movie if you would just put it together that way. But I think they wanted to do it this way to kind of make a statement. And I think it's kind of funny. At first I was thrown off and I was just like, what is this garbage? Why are you doing this? And I was like, oh, I think they did this to, to kind of be funny. And I get it. And I kind of like, I dig it, kind of. But it was just a little, little bit annoying having to go back and be like, oh, that episode's over. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. It was so frequent. So, but, you know, I get it. So overall, what are you going to get into? Hopefully people who are watching this are watching it because they're like, should I watch this? Should I not? So I'll set realistic expectations. One, it's very low budget. Uh, it 
comes off low budget around the same as the Puppet Master of the Littlest Reich. So, like, you can definitely tell just watching it, seeing the quality of the acting. Um, they they um, they tried to skimp on, like, the practical effects. Uh, and But kind of like with the Littlest Reich, they, they put it where it counts, which is they put enough into the actual critters. And I think they were very creative with the way that they made the critters interact with the people like there are times where if you were watching close enough you you were seeing that like someone's covered in critters and they're like they're doing the acting of like shaking the critters where they need to to make it look like they're alive and attacking and they did a decent job with that actually but you can also like tell you're like yeah this is pretty low budget so i can like tell that you know, this person's just doing all the work for it. They just kind of put them on there. But, hey, I mean, I think it works, especially for the tone they set. So it's a lot like a Sharknado-type movie. Like I said, it's very self-aware. It's very campy. It's very, like, over-the-top. You know that when they're making this, they were not thinking, this is going to be serious. We're going for something very serious. We're trying to do a serious story. And you'll see that in the actual storyline because it's, it's ridiculous. But honestly... I thought that was fun about it. Like, this is going back to that kind of Critters 80s campiness and then ratcheting it up and upgrading it for nowadays. Like I said, like kind of like a Sharknado, which a lot of people love those Sharknado-type films. So I think it fits nowadays. I think it goes well. As long as you're fine with a really low budget, I'm just going to call it a movie. It's basically a movie. <laughs> as long as you're cool with, like, a really low budget movie that... Um, is over the top and campy, then okay, you're gonna like it. And I did, I did, I, ha I had a fun time with it. I think that the overall storyline, as it got ridiculous, I found more enjoyment in the ridiculousness of it. And they had a few really good jokes. They did have some jokes in there that were just like, okay, like a little corny, too corny, Not no one's really gonna laugh at that, but they did have enough good jokes that I was like, that's funny. I like that. That's a fun time. Uh, and like the big twist in the ending is um, delightfully absurd, I will say. Just delightfully absurd in my opinion. And it, I believe it kind of sets things up if they want to do a season two. They can go ahead and do a season two. And I would watch that. I would definitely watch it. So, you know, I just like this, this idea of mining the 80s and mining old nostalgic material and, and putting a show or, or a movie on Shudder about it. And, and you can keep it low budget like this as long as you're, keep, as long as you're selecting these like more ridiculous, kind of campy, not considered to be like awesome movies. Uh, as long as you're choosing that material and making these low budget things, I think you're going to be okay. So overall... I really enjoyed it. The acting is what you would expect for a super low budget film, but Tom Lennon shows up in this one, just like he was in the Puppet Master Littlest Reich. Uh, he is in Critters, which I was like, oh, that's awesome. So if this would become a theme and they continue to do more of these exclusives, if Tom Lennon shows up in every one, I'm excited. I think he's a, an awesome actor, and especially for how low budget these are, I feel like he adds a... a a, I don't want to say inappropriate level of acting. He adds a undeserved level of acting to what the material is. And it's nice. Like, it's nice. And and like I said, I just like him. I think he's funny. I think he does a good job. Gilbert Gottfried is in this too. And I was like, ooh, how's this going to go? He did a good job. He was funny. He had some good parts in it. And um, yeah, the practical effects are not great. You could tell that they really skimped on a lot of stuff. But I feel like you kind of forgive it. Like, as you're going on and you get used to, okay, this is super low budget. Okay, you know, they really needed to, to rein things in. You kind of get it and you're just, and you become more forgiving with it. You're like, that's fine. Whatever, you know. They put it where it counts. They, they had really good design on the actual critters themselves. And there is something that was probably more ambitious that they went for in the very end. And I think that they kind of made the whole thing with that in in mind is that they needed to do a lot more stuff at the end that was going to be more expensive so they needed to kind of like skimp up up front until they got there so or actually they could have shot that end portion first who knows you know films don't shoot in order necessarily so but 
anyway, that's kind of my quick-ish, I mean, it's about 10 minutes, but that quick-ish uh, review of it with no spoilers, because I it doesn't, like the Puppet Master Littlest Reich, it doesn't need spoilers. It just doesn't. Just watch it. If anything in what I said sounds at least a little bit intriguing, actually, just check it out. Just watch it. It's not a huge time commitment, and I thought it was a lot of fun. Like I said, if you like Sharknado and stuff like that and, like, ridiculous campiness and you're fine with low budget, go for it. So, Shudder, let me say to you guys, great job. Um, very happy. Just keep doing this type of stuff. Let people go for it. Be ridiculous, and we'll all have fun. Uh, the other thing to remind people of, the last drive-in with Joe Bob Briggs is starting on March 29th, with it, which is this coming Friday. If you like that type of stuff, you like horror movie hosts and seeing awesome horror movies, campy horror movies, ridiculous horror movies, weird horror movies, interesting horror movies, he hits everything. It's going to be a double feature every night. Uh, at, well, I'm sorry, not every night. Every Friday night, he'll be doing a double feature hosting for, I believe, nine weeks is, is what it's set up for for now. Hopefully after that, they renew him, and we don't have to wait that much more time until we get another season of that. So, yeah, so get excited. And if you don't have Shudder, sign up. It's like five bucks a month, man. It's five bucks a month. And if you sign up for a whole year at once, I believe it's still it's four bucks a month. So I don't know how you can't go for this if you're into horror. You have to, basically. Anyway, once again, please subscribe. I really appreciate that. Let's do some comments down here. We can talk about horror. We can talk about Shudder. We can talk about whatever you want. Thumbs up are always cool. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking out this video. Spread the word. And until next time, keep it brutal.